was really born out of um, a, a desire to tackle the indoor and outdoor air pollution problems. Um, we've been dealing with the indoor air pollution problems for a very long time. Um, we've got we've got uh, seven years of manufacturing, I think, um, and, and designing and developing new iterations of indoor air purifiers, like this one behind me, which is a purifier humidifier. Um, so really, the, the challenge that was facing us for outdoor air pollution control was was how do you make all of that technology portable, able to be taken on the go, taken with you wherever you go. Um, and uh, and as we started looking at new formats for carrying that tech around, because obviously we can't stop subway cars producing brake dust, we can't take the cars off the road, we can't stop factories producing emissions, but we can give people control over their own personal pollution exposure. Um, what we, what we wanted to do was, was, was find a format that would help us carry all of that stuff effectively. So we're talking about the core technologies that we have, the purifiers like filters, motors, sensors, um, airflow technology. Um, so shrinking all of that stuff down, which is kind of about this big, into a space package that's kind of about this big is the, is the plan um, at that point. So we, we looked at some weird formats and things in backpacks over the shoulders, stuff like that. And we, it wasn't working at, the, at those those type of formats because people needed to be it kind of needed to be a format a product that people already taking with them on their commute already taking with them around the city. So when we stumbled upon um, kind of mounting everything to this is a bit of an evolution um, mounting everything early on to um, uh, over the headphones we actually realised as we looked at noise cancelling. Um, there was a new problem um, to solve, which is people who are exposed to outdoor air quality issues are also often exposed to um, noise pollution. So air pollution and noise pollution are two big problems when you're on a subway car, um, when you're walking down a busy street, um, you've got kind of an assault on the senses, if you like, of, of air pollution and noise pollution. So we, we, we were facing two, two big challenges and our, our, our engineering challenge that with that was to overlay those systems and make them both work to the best of their ability. So I'll talk you very quickly through, that's kind of where the product came from, if you like. Um, I'll talk you very through quickly through the audio system and then through the purification system and then I'll stop talking and mm -hmm. you can have a go. Um, uh, and hopefully the demo will, will do more for the product than I ever can. Um, so audio reproduction wasn't really a very big leap for us. We've been making quiet stuff for a really long time. We've got six anechoic chambers, um, dozens of acousticians with degrees in acoustic engineering. Um, so that all the capabilities and the facilities were there for us to be able to make a quite small jump to audio reproduction, not just noise cancelling and noise control. So um, we've got a shiny, bit of a shiny slide up here, but this is basically a summary of stuff we did to make sure that it was the best audio and noise cancelling product possible. Um, so I'll talk you through each one of them uh, with a little bit of detail. Um, if you've got any questions, then just ask straight away, it's fine. Um, so the first one was ultra low distortion. And effectively what this means is that our goal was to recreate the kind of studio sound, if you like. <coughs> so so make, it, make it sound like you're in the room with the, mu with the musicians. And that becomes um, a very, that means that you need a very clean sound and a very faithful sound to the input. So from an engineering perspective, it's real simple. We want the output to be the same as the input. Um, ultra low distortion means that we can have um, a very clean signal without any noise that shouldn't be there. I don't know if you've ever turned up the speakers in your car or on earphones or whatever to the point where they sound bad. Uh, that sounding bad is extra noise, which is distortion. So distortion is measured as a percentage of the total signal. There's noise that shouldn't be there or noise that's missing. Um, and that's harmonic distortion. Um, and that happens because the diaphragm of the speaker is it can't quite move to where it should do or it can't quite move quick enough because of the spring force and the, maybe if you've got the audio cavity behind the speaker that's too small. So what you need is a pretty big speaker um, and a, a pretty big audio cavity to allow that diaphragm to move freely. Um, so if you think of a, a, a speaker trying to reproduce a sine wave for example which is just kind of a nice even um, sine wave, a distortion would be where you clip the top and bottom of that and you get harmonic just, um, uh, replication up the, up the frequency range and it's expressed as I say as a percentage of the total noise that shouldn't be there. I won't um, tell you which brand, other brands of headphone we measured. We measured plenty. Uh, we've got the lowest distortion out of any that we measured. 
Uh, it's 0.08 percent at 94 decibels, which is really loud, way louder than you should be listening to a movie cat. Um, so, <laughs> making that distortion inaudible means that we get a really clean signal, and it really you know, sounds like you're in the room of the band is the, is the goal, or the producer, or whatever it is. Um, so, kind of ticking the box for that, nice clean signal. Um, then the second one, is, the second pillar of audio engineering for us was um, advanced noise cancelling. And this is the bit that's tackling that first problem of noise cancelling, uh, noise pollution, sorry. Um, th this is a two-part problem. Uh, well, two-part solution, sorry. Um, noise, noise, noise pollution comes in at full frequency of sounds all the way from kind of baby screaming to jet engine. Um, ANC, active noise cancelling, is kind of pegged as the poster child for for noise cancelling tech, um, but it's so really only half the story. Um, consumers might think ANC does the whole spectrum, but it doesn't. It was developed originally for pilots and is really good at taking out low rumbles, drones, white noise, that kind of stuff. Uh, what you need is passive noise attenuation as well, really good passive noise attenuation for the top end. So that'll take out whistles, pity tacky, people speaking, interrupting sounds, almost the more annoying end of the spectrum, if you like. Um, so we need both. We realise that in industry, some people are ignoring passive noise attenuation. Pagan A and C is the is the wonder, wonder child. Um, it doesn't work like that. You need you need both. Um, <coughs> we, especially when you're putting a motor, which is our compressor for our filtration um, and purification assembly, right next to people's ears. So there's one of those, and that's inside each side of this um, product. So for A and C, we've got eleven microphones in the product. Um, three on the outside, which are the feed forward microphones, and we've got three on the inside of each ear cup. So we've got one, two, three around there. They're the feedback microphones, and we've also got mics that measure the motor tones. Um, and all of that information is, is fed into a kind of an active noise cancelling um, algorithm that is fed back into the speakers and takes out all of those annoying tones and numbers. Um, as I say, that's only half the, half the story, though. You also need really good passive noise attenuation. So for that, you need three things. You need a really good seal. Uh, you need reflective materials to bounce the sound away, or you need really absorptive materials that will absorb the sound. So we've got all three. So we've got really good, um, big, comfortable ear cushions. We tested seven different foams um, for comfort and for passive noise attenuation. Uh, I actually realized that, you know, the fake, the fake leather that you get on um, a lot of headphones, it's worse, but not only does it look bad after about a month, but it's, it's also worth the um, passive noise attenuation. So we, um, we specified a microfiber on all, all of the, um, the Dyson Zone skis, uh, which is a little bit hard wearing. You can also wash it and put it back on just to be a bit better in general. Um, so those two systems combined, uh, the passive and active noise cancelling, means that we can get a total noise attenuation of up to 38 dB, which is huge. If you imagine a 3 dB um, change is a doubling in sound power, um, so you're getting a really big um, reduction in noise, uh, which was solving our first problem. So we're 50, halfway there. <laughs> um, uh, we're back to audio reproduction though. Um, what we did was we specified really large speakers, so they're 40 millimeter speakers, and that allowed us um, to push the capability of those speakers um, beyond the range of human hearing, um, which allows us uh, basically you get a drop off in, 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 in cap speed capability frequency response at the, at the top end and the bottom end of the spectrum. So if this is 20 hertz where human hearing ends and this is 20,000 hertz where human hearing ends at the other, other end, if you push the speaker capability outside of that, you can hear every the upper end of every signal crash and the lower end of every bass tone. Um, so this does 6 hertz to 21,000 hertz. So um, there's no headphones for dogs. Um, but um, uh, but uh, that means that you get a really you're able to really accurately and faithfully reproduce the, the studio sound if you like. Um, and then we tuned it a lot. We found a lot of software companies and hardware manufacturers and stuff that mess around with the sound a lot. Um, it's kind of not for not for us to do. It's for the musicians and the artists to do. Um, so what we wanted um, to do was make sure the input and output signal was as close closely matched as possible. So we, we tuned the equalization, which is the, all of the frequency bands the sound power of each of those relative to each other so that nothing is covering up anything else. So that's the goal. None of that matters though if you don't actually want to wear the headphones. Um, so the last pillar of good audio engineering is comfort. Um, <coughs> so we did hundreds of hours of user trialing um, uh, and loads of white paper research and built 
dozens of, of kind of 3D printed heads that informed kind of the, the size and shape and movement of the headphones, the adjustment that you can do on the headband and on the visor. Um, and then uh, we, as I say, did loads of user trials that told us that these large um, kind of ear cushions were comfortable. Um, and very importantly, the top uh, head cushion on the top is really comfortable as well, even to the point of realizing um, we had a silicon kind of cross hatch over the foam here uh, on the inside. Um, people, when they're born, their skull falls with a slight ridge down the top. Um, we found that after about three hours, that silicon piece became a little bit uncomfortable for people, so we took it out. So there's, there's kind of a, the nth, going to the nth degree really on, on comfort and um, making sure that you can um, wear it for a long time and it's not a distraction from the audio. Uh, just anecdotally, I wore these for 16 hours on Monday um, on the way here. Uh, and it was lovely. <laughs> no babies crying, uh, no jet engine, and I didn't, well. didn't have to take them off, yeah, which was nice. Um, so that's the audio. We we do realise that you can you kind of do want to have a bit of control if you if you um, uh, want to change your equalisation. So although we've got a recommended enhanced profile um, in the app, uh, it's a connected product obviously. In the app, you can um, adjust like turn the bass up or have a slightly flatter equalisation. Um, that's audio. Runtime in audio is massive because we've got really big batteries, which are in here. So battery in here, battery in here. Um, it's up to 50 hours. What? <laughs> with audio plus AMC. Okay. Uh, so it's more than double a lot of the headphones in market, um, uh, which is pretty generous. Should get you to Australia and back. <laughs> a couple of times, I think. Um, so uh, so that, that was really good. We're pleased that we can kind of solve the, the first half of the, the problems, if you like, the noise pollution problem, making sure they sound Great, it's our first foray into audio and um, we're not very good at compromise, so, <laughs> so they, they had to sound perfect basically. Um, but then obviously we had to solve the air pollution issue. Um, for this, this is the, the original idea for the concept as well. Um, uh, for this you need three systems broadly. There's a bunch of other stuff going on, but um, these are the big ones. Um, so we've got filters on the outside of e each ear cup that are replaceable. Um, this was kind of the easiest bit. We have pretty good filtration and um, been taking stuff out of there for a very long time. Um, so we've got particulate filters at the top here. So this is a uh, new media for us. It's an electrostatic media. Um, it's really robust to envir environmental conditions and it removes 99% of particles as small as 0.1 microns, um, which is tiny, uh, so you can't see it. And it's also the most difficult to capture kind of counterintuitively as it gets, as particles get smaller, they get easier to capture mm. and bigger, they get easier to capture. And this has just enough momentum to get through the tiny gaps without being pulled towards the fibers. Um, so this has a static charge on it, which drags particles out of the air onto the filter. And then um, on the back side, there's a gas filtration layer as well. Um, so air pollution is a little um, bit like a two part problem. Gases and particulates, they require two different solutions. Um, so this removes things like NO2 uh, or SO2, so which are pretty common city gases. Um, so we've got an ability to tackle both parts of the air pollution problem outdoors, if you like. Um, as I say, that was kind of the easy bit. Um, the really, really difficult bit was making this motor that sits in, and compressor that sits inside each air cup, quiet and efficient. Um, <clears throat> so we did a couple of things. I mean, I could talk for days about how difficult and painful this was, but it's like kind of why it took six years. But um, this is Dyson's smallest ever compressor. Um, so we're talking about taking something that's about this big and packing it down to that. Um, and it's also our best and most finely balanced ever compressor. And what that means is it spins really flat. The, the impeller spins really flat and it's dragging in the air. If you imagine like a spinning top on a table, as soon as it starts to wobble, it generates vibration and therefore noise. Um, we didn't want that happening right next to your ear. Trying to solve the noise pollution issue, not generate it. Um, so what we did was we, um, what we do is uh, dremel out or kind of machine out basically. So you measure, measure the vibration profile of the compressor on the line, and then you machine out with a CNC machine a little bit of the top of the impeller, and that means that it spins really flat. So you get assembly variance up to that point, and then it spins really flat after that. It's a little bit like balancing a car wheel, for example. Uh, the kind of cool thing about that is that they're all different. So the, the drill profile on the top of that impeller is different to the drill profile on the, on the top of this impeller, for example, is different to the ones in the product. They're all unique. Um, so it was really going to the nth degree, as I say, on, on everything, but especially on making this quiet. So any vibration that is left is then 
not being transmitted to the product um, is, is the ideal one because we've got very soft mounts here that's mounted on these little rubber feet um, and the inside of the cage of the product. Um, so it's isolated from the rest of the product, if you like, in terms of its uh, vibration. After that, it shoots out of the front of the, so it's being drawn in there, shoots out of the front, which is these two slots on the front of the product. Uh, and then we had to, so the third thing that we had to do was get that clean air to where you're breathing, which is really interesting. This was a, a bit uh, a bit that I worked on with my team um, for a long time, which is the contact-free air delivery visor. So it's a nice lightweight, very flexible, very robust, very adjustable um, part of the machine. Um, and that just sits just in front of your face without touching it, without restricting the, um, the breathing, um, without having kind of a jet of, of, of air. Um, what we wanted to do, we realized was using this mesh that so goes into, the clean air goes into the slot and then using this mesh, uh, it kind of wafts a bubble a zone, if you like, of clean air towards your breathing zone, which is here um, uh, for you to breathe from rather than kind of the Britney Spears style jetting it up your nostrils you don't need to do it people are pretty good at breathing um, we just need to make sure that the air in front of their face is, is clean uh, so that's what this does um, it's also really easy to take apart for cleaning um, so it comes apart very easily which is great um, so you can just clean it with warm water and, and soap uh, and then let it dry um, and that's what means means that we can get the, kind of the clean air to the user's face what the the use case that we imagine is people will be kind of they'll leave their house They'll have their headphones on, um, they'll be walking down the street um, and they want to go to um, a subway or into um, along a busy road and they think, okay, well, I'm protected from, from the noise pollution, but I'm not that protected from air pollution at the moment. So they pull their visor out of out their bag, snap it on with magnets, um, the flow will start automatically um, and then you're, you're protected. So there's three different flow speeds. There's low, medium and high. There's also an automatic mode. Um, so it will control, it will monitor your movement with accelerometers in the ear cups, um, correlate that to a breathing rate, and then deliver you the right amount of air, whatever you need. Most most people will be, most people spend their life sat down or, or walking, um, rather than running upstairs. Um, so those three speeds correlate roughly to a sat down, walking and running upstairs. Um, we expect most people will be in rest, in the lowest flow rate most of the time. Um, and then if you want to have a chat, um, with someone, buy a coffee, drink a coffee, have a, buy a train ticket, whatever. Um, you can dip your visor as I've done here. It will turn on the mic pass-through mode, pause your music, pause your flow, uh, automatic, all automatically. You can have a chat and then you just swap it back up and the flow start back up again. I think this one's run out of battery. Um, uh, so all quite easy to use and you get to work and you can have calls on it. It's got really, really good, really clear telephony. Um, thanks. Um, and uh, and then you can listen to music and listen to it on the way home. Um, with airflow, uh, the, for example, in the lowest flow speed, you get up to four hours of runtime. So if you're commuting on the tube for more than four hours a day, you should be like changing your job. Um, <laughs> so it's a pretty generous runtime for both audio and for flow um, to service kind of a, a kind of regular use. It charges from zero to hundred percent with USB-C charger um, in three hours. So. It, try, zero to 80 is much quicker, but you have to don't want to damage the batteries for that last 20%, so you have to slow it down a bit. Does that all make sense? Yeah. yeah.